Hello, and welcome to Sounds from the Pit. We have a very special episode for you today. Back in July, we shot an episode with the Bill Henry Band. And you already know who the life of the party was. Our dear brother, Philippe Price. So in honor of his life and legacy, this episode is dedicated to you, Flip. My pastor always closes his eulogy with these words that I would like to borrow. Sleep on, sweet prince. Sleep on. And may the flight of angels take thee to thy resting place, which is found in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sounds from the Pit with the Bill Henry Band. What up, what up? It's your boy D. Folk, the maestro, with another hot take, Sounds from the Pit. I'm here with my boy. Say hello to the people, bro. Yes, sir. My name is Aki Jamal Durham. I am the most interesting man in Pittsburgh. That's what I'm hitting with today. The most interesting man in Pittsburgh. Yes, sir. Yes, my MP. Mimpin' ain't easy. <laughs> Blend Bar with Davidoff Cigars, and we got a special hot guest here for you today. Give it up for the Bill Henry Band is in the house. What's going on, What's man? What's up, fellas? How you doing? Appreciate y'all's presence. Come on and introduce, uh, introduce yourself to the people. Thanks, Dwayne. My name is Bill Henry. I'm vocals and guitar in the band. Randy Dose Williams, drums. Dose. Larry Hutch, keys. Philippe Price, bass, self bass. So is is that your you you y'all gave me your government names again? I got the dose. Oh, going to, I got dose. Yeah, so dose. Big flip. Big flip. Big flip. Yeah. Big flip. We Hutch. all know. I'm Hutch. Hutch. Everybody know Hutch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ben Ray, I guess. Ben Ray. <laughs> that's, yeah. the only, that's the only one that stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And dose. I know him by Randy. Sometimes uh, I don't know who I was talking to. They was like, "Yo, dose is on the drums." I'm like, who's dose? I was like, that's Randy, yo. <laughs> Man, man, glad to have y'all. So let's let's get right into it. Um, it's no secret that the Bill Henry Band is is the biggest. Some would say the baddest band in Pittsburgh. Tell me about you guys. Start. I know all you. I just met Bill recently, but I know all you guys individually. Uh, I've seen a show or two and hot to death. I think Pittsburgh would agree, and it's starting to spread even outside. Of, of Pittsburgh. Tell me about the start. So the, we've, we've said the start, I think, collectively a bunch of times. So I, for this, I'd like to maybe have everybody give their little snippet of like their point of view mm -hmm. and how everything started. So uh, I was actually involved with a jam night at Young Brothers Bar, a good friend of ours, Jamie Younger, uh, every Wednesday night. This was probably like 2015. And uh, he, uh, Dose and Jamie have been friends for a long time. He happened to call Randy and uh, say, hey, Got this kid down here. He's really talented. I think maybe he just needs some consistency and some guidance. And uh, I think you could put a band behind him. And uh, Randy came down to a, a jam session. Uh, we exchanged numbers, and uh, kind of the rest is history. And we we uh, you know very quickly became really really close friends and, and brothers. And 
it was um, just a really good chemistry from early on. Um, so, and then I've, like I said, throughout the last few years, I've learned uh, just so much in terms of being groomed in, into being the front man okay. of the band. Um, so, which is still a work in progress, but um, I appreciate the compliments. Thank you. Nice. I'm gonna pass it to those. Like you said, uh, Jamie kept, man, you got to check this guy out. I know you can do some with him. Sawling spoke to him, and I felt his presence. I saw in the music he had it. And at the time, I was really, really busy playing with five, six different bands, church, choir, everything, you know. Exchange numbers called me. We did a trio gig, uh, a good friend's house. And uh, cat smoking cigars, drinking cognac, I'll read that. I said, man, you guys are bad, man. I'm feeling, man, I'm used to seeing this. What's the name of the band? <laughs> so Bill was like, uh, we real? it's the Bill Emery band. And uh, he said, really? I said, absolutely, man. You know, I'm going to do this. I need you to get in the car, ride. Don't tell me turn left. Don't tell me turn right. So the initial process was to surround him with seasoned cats. Okay. Pittsburgh, see, you know, seasoned cats, poison. Like you, like you just said, lazy. <laughs> that was off camera, though, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> For you a know, reason. Wanted, it, yeah. You know, uh, so I went through a lot of cats looking for that chemistry, you know, and uh, had a couple cats. He's not black enough. Well, he's never going to it's about accompanying what we're trying to build here and being part of the brand, you know. So I prayed about it, man, and uh, Hutch came in my prayer, you know. He gave me my first gig in church, you know, and I gave him his first gig in the club, you know. And uh, so I, I called Hutch. He said, yeah, I'm, I'm down, I'm down. So initially we had another bass player, uh, Josh Powell, for a while. And uh, he went on to do some other things. But I had been playing with Flip since Flip was in high school, you know, and always had a bond and a love for him, you know. But he was big cat in town, you know. He was playing with some people and real busy. He was with Nash at the time. Okay. And uh, me and him was doing a thing with Antoinette Manganis, you know. And uh, so he was busy. My wife kept telling me, Flip's your bass player. Flip's your bass player, you know. So I called him, explained what it was about. You know, uh, he's my go-to guy. I need you. Can you make a commitment? Make sure you write, you know. Because the key was to have consistent musicians. You know, everybody, there's, there's like four different bands, but they're really only one band. And I was a part of that. I played with everybody that's right. anybody in the city over the years, you know. So that was my thing, was to have something consistent, different, and special, you know. And, and my relationship with each one of these guys is special. So if I could translate that into the music and pull it out of them, it's a win, yeah. you know. And uh rest Good is stuff. history. It was more like, you know, he called me and was like, hey, yo, I got this guy, you know, I want to see if we can – make something happen. And I was like, all right, let's, you know, let's do it. And uh, came to my crib for rehearsal and, uh, you know, a little insight. <laughs> it got to come up, bro. It, it, it does come up. It has to. All right. In interjection real quick. It's so a funny story. I didn't interject on your turn. I know it's just a funny story now, but I, but it, I love him so much. So I don't really think of it anymore. But okay. He always brings it up. Yeah, go so ahead and drop I, a right, hug. So go ahead and I drop did, a hug. I did, I did. Go ahead and drop a hug. You, you feel what I'm saying? So we were playing, and he uh, he said to me, he was like, he's like, all right, we're going we're going to play this song. He he called a song, and we start playing it, and I played it. I was playing it in the original key that it was written in, and he was playing it in somewhere different. I was like, I was like, oh, 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 oh. I was like, Is we playing in the right key here? He's like, no, I transposed. I was like, oh, that's dope. I was like, but you didn't tell me. I was like, I didn't know we was doing that. He was like, he said, well, we're playing an E, and I was like. All right, and so I, <laughs> so I, so I pulled those to the side. I was like, I don't know about this guy right here, and then, uh, 
you know, it was it was probably like forty five minutes later. I got to to you know vibe with him musically, and then it, it went from a vibe to a brotherhood. You know, what I'm saying uh, as Dose explained and as Bill explained the the relationship that we had with each other. It just transcend. Now I didn't know Bill and and me and Flip knew each other, but we didn't have that like real tight relationship. And uh, when those called me and said that Flip was coming on board, I had always wanted to play with Flip. But as everybody knows, Flip, you know, big time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's big special and shit. <laughs> so it, he just, uh, when he came in, he just like, you know, we gravitated to each other and it, and it made the bond that much better. So it wasn't like, it wasn't like how how a lot of people see it. Like, oh, you guys came together and just made something up. No, we didn't just make nothing up. Right. I think I think that's what a lot of people see. Uh-huh. Yeah, we 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 had we had to go we had to go like through, friends in high school that started a garage band. It yeah, wasn't no, that. we had to go through a lot of transitioning points and a lot of growing together uh, to um, establish what we have right now, what people get to enjoy now because we didn't have that initially, but. Once we all start hanging with each other and start, you know, you know, just playing, yeah, shooting the breeze and playing with each other, it, it just became natural. Yeah, that, that you know what I'm saying? The chemistry was there, and you know, mm-hmm. yeah. and that's and and I'm, I'm gonna piggyback off of that too because like I was busy, you know what I mean? And I, um, I had got my, t- <laughs> I had got my taste of uh, bands and stuff like mm-hmm. being a part of, mm-hmm. so, like committed committed musicians. So um, when I took a step back a little bit, I was getting my auto degree, you know what I mean? And I was at the tail end to get my auto degree. So I was like, okay, well now I'm gonna have time. I really wanna I really wanna be a part of something. This dude calls me, man. You know what I mean? It was just crazy. This just happened just like that. You know what I mean? He called me, said, hey man, you know, I got the situation. You know what I mean? I said, yo, I'll do it. I said, but I just wanna come hang with y'all first. <laughs> I just want. I just want to come. Important, yo. Sound like a I, wise listen, brother. You remember Flip. Pretty, <laughs> <a> pretty, <laughs> listen, when I say, when I say, I just, I whatever they were, wherever they was, they was on Pretties, Pretties, but in the strip district, you know what I mean? Great bar, uh, local, um, and then we just hung with each other. Man, that was like the be- That was like that was like the best night ever. I was like, yo, I'm in. <laughs> but. But we wait. Like, hadn't played a note with him yet. Oh yeah. man, ain't played a note with him right. yet. Honestly, whoa, whoa, no, I take that back. I did sub. I didn't play with okay. him yet, still. Okay. But we was subbing. We was doing little things because you know what I mean. Like you know, I was subbing in. So uh, man, but you know, playing that first that first show was crazy because it was like so different. Cause like I was playing sent down. You know, at first we was doing a little trio stuff, and I'm like, all right, that's cool. All right. Man, when I got to the casino, <laughs> man, he jumping around. I'm I like, know. Oh. I I'm saw like, one of them shows. Like, oh. yo, he, 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 yo, he, you know what I'm saying? He tripping. He, he dancing all over. Girls and all over. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Yo, like, you know what I'm saying? This is this about. So ever since then, man, like I said, it's just been like a uphill, man. We yeah. still rising. That, yeah. that, that, that's a beautiful thing. So uh-huh. the first time I seen you guys, it was a... Uh, pre-celebration with the the cues uh, and y'all were at the y'all did a pre-boarding like a bill henry's the in, what was yeah what was the bar there down there i forgot the bar down at the casino it was a drum bar, bar. Yeah. Like, and i'm like i couldn't get in yeah. oh, <laughs> and i see him i don't know if you were on top of the bar <laughs> You know, with the Prince move, with the yeah, guitar, yeah. like, I was like, oh, these dudes. I mean, I knew the three. It was the first time I experienced you, you right. know? And, and 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 talking about bands in Pittsburgh, uh, a lot of great musicians. Yeah, a lot, a lot of great singers, great. right? Yeah, well, let's t- we're doing cover songs. Yeah. And, you know, we flip them to, what you know, the thing that interests me, what is it, 2019. Yeah. Ride. Yeah. Original music. Let's talk about ride. Give me give me the concept of ride and let's talk about that a little bit before we move on. The concept for ride basically was me telling Bill, you know, get in the car and ride. Don't tell me turn left, don't tell me turn right. You know. So I at the time we wasn't writing music. Bill was writing music. 
and Bill had an album. Larry and Flip, you know, was in the beginning stages. Actually, Flip wasn't in the band when I started working on the album. Okay. Uh, Josh was in the band. He he was writing everything, but he wasn't in the band yet, you know. So I, I went to uh, my brother, Richard Williams, Akil, Manny, Deanda, and uh, Nicole. Nicole, yeah, you know, who which is a phenomenal production team. Okay. You know? I listened to hundreds and hundreds of songs, you know. I wanted a certain vibe. I wanted a continuity. I wanted a certain frequency on vibes to touch people. You know, mm-hmm. as an MD, you know them certain chords you play. Mm-hmm. You're like, whoa. Right. You know. And Bill didn't even know I was working on this. I was working on it like six months. Neither did I. Neither did Larry. Yeah. Was, yeah. Well, you wasn't in the band that. yet. Oh, yeah, Josh yeah, yeah. was in the band. You <laughs> know. Yeah. So I put it all together and uh, I'm waiting on Bill. He's developing, he's killing, he's starting to get there, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, how you feel? He's like, yeah, I said, all right, come on, let's take a ride. So we went for a ride. I stopped at a young producer's house. We listened to some music on the on the notes of like BJ and the Chicago Kid type deal, uh-huh. you know, and just giving him a little feeling, you know. Then when we got to Akil's, we come in, his name's on the screen. It's a welcome wow. type situation for him. You know what I mean? He don't know. And it's like, you know, welcome. You know, and then he's, he's he done studied Bill. And, you know, I had Nicole and them coming out to shows, mm-hmm. just watching. And he didn't know who she was, you know. And she was just watching. And that's how he was developing concepts of the song. That's you know? sweet. And finally... We had it almost together. Manny sang on the on the uh, original demo, <laughs> you know, and we start playing songs. And Bill was like, "Wow!" So we leave out of there, and he's like, "Man, you really did all that?" I said, "I ain't playing, bro." Yeah. When I when I when I sat down with you, I even went to his parents at dinner. Sat down, and asked for permission. This is the journey we going on. This is what I'm gonna do. I said, "Give me one year." You'll be a household name. Give me two years, you'll be a national recording artist. I want to do two tours and two albums, and I'm going to fall back, put one of my young bucks on drums, and watch y'all. Nice. And manage and just watch them just explode, you know. And uh, he's got in the car. Man, he almost had tears in his eyes. He's like, bro, man, that thing is for real. I said, yeah, you just got to put your personality on it. It's it. Listen to what man he's doing, but don't try to copy him. I need right. Bill Henry. I need Bill. Because yeah, he had been hiding his first CD from me for months. Finally, he let me hear it. I'm like, oh, my God, bro. Because when I, I'm going to be honest with you. When I saw Bill and it, and it started resonating with me, I saw Ed Sheeran, John Mayer. Yeah. I saw an opportunity for me yeah. to get in here, get my Steve Jordan on, lay back and, right. just, and play stadiums and see the world. Yeah. You know, Bill wanted to be R and B. I said, okay, you know what R and B's going for this right. one too. You know? Everybody's calling him John B. He really only knew about one song from John B. So one day we we vibing, mm-hmm. we sitting at the crib, we out on the deck, go in, boom, and I play John uh John B unsung. Mm-hmm. So he could watch Full story. Get a perspective of what the journey is going to be like. Uh-huh. And in the beginning, it was a lot of talk. Pittsburgh, oh, that, that, that's hate. a part of the. That's part yeah. of the journey. But he don't know that because yeah. he's new to the game. So what y'all don't, I mean, y'all might know. So I went to Kappa, yeah. the, the the real Kappa. Yeah. <laughs> I went to Homewood original. Kappa, Homewood. right? Yeah. yeah. Homewood. <laughs> Young Buck. <laughs> Everything he talked about, he was doing that. Back yeah. then, Absolutely. now he was big bro. Then you know we were looking up to you and Tim Hatcher and, yeah. the, and yeah. God rest his soul. Yes. But you were doing that even then. Absolutely, man, what a blessing! Like yeah. so, so I mean the album is hot. If y'all ain't got it, I ain't got the CD because you know you can get it on any digital download. Yeah. Bill Henry Ride, baby, Ride, 2019. Take a ride. Take a ride. So is there, is there another one in the works? Yeah, absolutely. You said you said two dot. Yeah. So you we're working on one? We got like six songs. Okay. Partly done. Uh, okay. Flipping, writing some mean stuff. Look, look. Man. So, so I, I, I know, I ain't a social media yeah. cat. Yeah. But I, anytime I see him, like, dude. So it's like church, you know, Mount Eric. Shout out to Mount Eric. So I always tease my our musicians. 
Because they're killing, but they're stoic. Bass player. I see Flip, especially at a gig, face. And he's looking at the camera like, I love to see you play. And it draws me, man, that those, you talk about that synergy and yes, stuff. Yes, and then yeah. when I, I didn't even know that was you on the keys when we were down at the bar down man, in. Uh, walking and the whole, his swag. So I, wow. so, so I went to Claude. I said, man. that's Hutch. He played keys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let it cut here, yo. Uh, the, fir the first I, 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 couple of gigs, man. Yeah. He, came, he came to the first few gigs with this rolling amp and this little apple cap and his glasses. And he would be like, I'm like, yo, bro, you be a part of this, man. You got to stand up, yeah, all right. get up, and get your swag. Mm -hmm. you know, we got flip, it, because I didn't I need recognize you to get it. get a synth bass, because we going to do some different. Man, man, that's that's he bought a synth bass in one day. He was yeah. killing it. <laughs> so killing. a lot of people don't. A lot of if, if you don't know, you know what I mean. I started on keys. You know what I'm saying. And a lot of people don't know that. You know, this is like it was like it wasn't hit. It was just it wasn't a lane. Right. It's it's what I've been wanting to do, but it just wasn't a lane. You know what I mean. Right. So like if I'm playing with Nash, you know he's like rock. You know what I'm saying. Right. A lot of people can't play different genres. It's, it's almost like taking a musician in a jazz world and sitting them down at Mount Eric to fill in for somebody. And it's like, they lost, you know what I mean? So to be able to play these different genres, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I took a, I took a seat, like, wow. Like I really studied it, you know what I mean? That's good. So like when they, when they had this lane, I was like, wow. Like I get to play key bass, you know what I'm saying? Sim stuff, you know what I mean? I can write, I can produce, you know what I'm saying? I could do it all, like all right here. You know what I mean? And my and my heart always been R and B. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. cleaned the house. I don't know about y'all. Right. But every Saturday we cleaned the house. No doubt. Listen right. to R and B. Come on no now. Doubt. You know what I'm saying? You know now. what I'm saying? No right. I mean, I mean every Saturday. Every so, Saturday. Yeah. So uh, you know, this was just like an ideal situation, man. And, That's um, great. And then to be honest, like, we write and we write together, you know what I mean? And it'd be the most dope, amazingest music, but it's it's from us. Yeah. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's from here. So, like, it don't even matter what the world thinks. Like, I right. just want to write stuff that feel good to us. And this is... Me. Go ahead, Hutch. Yeah. And he wrote a number one song. Okay. In, in Canada and the UK. Okay. What Love Can Do, our second single, you know, hmm. we that thing went number one. I'm I think on there, was a, uh, there was a point in which Dose had said to us right when the pandemic had hit. And actually, at, before that... Um, when Rod was about to come out, he had called me and Bill and I had worked, Bill and I had worked on a song. He had came over, Bill came over my house and heard me, like I was. I had tracked something out on my keyboard, <clears throat> excuse me. And Bill said, uh, he said, what's that? I was like, oh, this is something I'm working on. He's like, oh, let that ride. And we sat there and we wrote to it. And then uh, Flip and I sat down and um, did a little bit more uh, music to it, because those uh, said could be a little bit more done to it. So once we put that, we transferred that whole energy from like three songs. It was Secrets, uh, Slow Down, and Story of My Life that we all did collectively in the, uh, the studio. And then right when the pandemic hit, those said to us, he was like, he said, y'all need to go ahead and, and start doing it. You know how he be? He be like, yeah. He was like, yeah. Y'all, y'all, y'all need to go ahead and do it. And then we turned around. I hear it on the gig. It's on the break. The sound check, like what just happened to hit a button. He just happened to hit a button. Wow. I'm like, yo, what is that? <laughs> So, so my my mind went to oh man this is some R Kelly two step type uh -huh. you know what I'm saying right, 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 Al right. already I I can hear it my way you yeah. know hey, so then when they I, did the lyrics yeah. so I got a funny story because you know we always be on his deck pull that mic up a little bit oh okay yeah. I got a funny story so we always be on his deck right and um pause that sounds crazy. So, so it did. And it you said it like three crazy. times. Wow, that's like you really wanted, yeah, you yeah, really yeah. wanted us to know it bad know. enough that, that you had to crazy. say it three yeah. times. Hold on, yeah. yeah. look into the, the mic. Pick up the mic and say that again. Let y'all know. We pause it. Come on, hold on, hold on. Pause infinity right now. I gotta explain something. I gotta explain something. And my and my e my e my e sounded like an I right now. You know what I'm saying? 
So I'm going to say patio. Okay. I'm going to say patio. Yeah, I'm going to say patio. We was in his backyard. There you go. Yeah, we was in his backyard. So, so. It was so funny. It was so funny because this dude, this dude, like we, we, you know, we having some drinks and we eating, clowning, you know, just how we, this how we be right. all day. I swear. So look, I said, "Dang man, y'all ain't doing no original stuff, man. Me and that, we do original." He was like, "Man, we got original stuff. I got." I'm, I said, "For real?" I swear, I was like in a bed for like yeah. a year before I even knew. Man, he played the stuff. I said, "What?" Why ain't we doing this? You know what I'm saying? It's like, it ain't done yet. We slow cooking. That's exactly how it happened. I swear. I swear that's exactly how it happened. So transition, I just wanted to give some insight, you know, because a lot of times, I, not just in Pittsburgh, but a lot of places, people have their own takes on bands and people don't really know how bands were brought together. You know, and so I thought it was important for for the people to to understand yeah. how this came about. Yeah. But Sounds from the Pit is all about this idea, and I say it on every episode, of this research that I've been doing of the great history and lineage of musicians, culture, sports, everything in Pittsburgh. However, when you travel, we're only identified mainly by, which is great, is the Steelers, because I believe black and gold, black right? And gold. Uh, unless, uh, again, baby boomers, they know about the Crawford Grill and some of uh, uh, the places that our parents went to to see the Temptations and a lot of those great acts that were come and frequent here. And, you know, so the question came to my mind, because I know, I know the Philly sound, I know the New York sound, the multiple New York sounds, which you wrap into East Coast. I know what New Orleans sounds like, the Dirty South, Tennessee, Nashville, they all have a sound. And I wouldn't broach this question if I didn't think that we weren't gifted, talented musicians. So the question comes, and I'm asking all of our artists, does Pittsburgh have a sound? If they do, describe that sound, and if they don't, why not? Pittsburgh sound is rock and roll. Pittsburgh Interesting. is a rock and roll town. Yeah. You know, you got the Clarks, you got, you know, Wild Cherry was one of, you know, first. I didn't know that. Wild yeah. Cherry? Wild Cherry was from Pittsburgh. I didn't I know that. that. Yeah, I played with them in the 80s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, so in Jerry's records. Was, yeah, had a lot of hits come out of there. Did you say some important stuff? Yeah, day. keep that up there. You know, uh, it's it. That's what Pittsburgh was built on: rock and roll. Wow, that's you know, a good take. It, it it really is. South Side, all rock and roll clubs. You know, so to knowing this and knowing playing with some of the top R and B bands in the city, played a band called Modern Man in the eighties. You know what I mean? Uh, we was a little pricey, so couldn't play a lot of places because they wouldn't pay, you know, so we threw our own gigs, you know, and sold them out. And you know how it was all women. I was you know, a Mortar Man fan, Doc. Yeah, yeah no doubt, no <laughs> doubt. Tail and, 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 and Timmy, yeah. you know what I mean? Spudsy, that was a beautiful thing, you know. Uh, so you say rock and roll. You don't follow up with, rock and roll. with a question? So have you said that before, and has anyone rebutted you? Because we, because it, it hit us right. by like rock and roll. Right. Right. We, that and that so never has, came up in any of our discussion. Never, right. Yeah. Right. So I'm curious, has anyone ever kind of rebutted that? that Not fact? that's from Pittsburgh and know the history of Pittsburgh. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. there's, there's only been, uh, other than Manny and them crave during the 90s, Chaz had the one record out. You know what I mean? Right. Chaz. Yeah. Chaz. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, What's the female singer that sings oh, on yeah. too? She What's lived right. She lived right Big, down the door uh, she, from me. She, she made that song uh, from St. Clair Village. Oh, uh, uh, Phyllis Hyman. Phyllis Hyman. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now you got you got the old school legends like that. You sure. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but still, but still. When you say Phyllis Hyman from from the outside, we yeah. know. Yeah. She was from Pittsburgh. Same That's right. what you get. Right. Yeah. Right. And people but she had Norman she Connors was, was her sound. Okay. They'll argue you with you. Say that, say, that. So he said something crazy. Yeah, people will argue with you about Phyllis Hyman because she was born in Philly. She came here as a teenager. Mm -hmm. oh. So a lot of folks were like, she ain't from Pittsburgh. Oh, but okay. she 
you came. Well, Wiz wasn't born here. Right. 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 <laughs> right. But he's Pittsburgh. one guy who, even not being born, so when you think about Georgie and some of the other ones, Strayhorn, mm -hmm. let's go with Uncle Roger. Maybe I need to research this more. I might be talking off the top of my dome. But when I, so, what, what I notice about like New yeah. York, oh yeah, what they what do they rep in there? They gonna say something about Harlem somewhere in the lyrics. Yes, they are. Yep. Yes, they are. Whether so they, they move are. to L.A. or not, right? Yep. Right. Have right. any of our musicians? I mean, Wiz. Yeah. The yeah. black and yellow thing is definitely a repping yeah. repping the yeah. bird kind of thing. What were yeah. you gonna say? Well, I was gonna say like me growing up. You know what I mean? Um, so I was just told the stories of how. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can go on the Hill District, and on every corner, Just you can like catch some of the baddest jazz cats that's out. You know what I mean? Back then, they was like, I mean, and I'm just sitting here, like, listening to all the stories on the culture of Pittsburgh as far as, like, the jazz scene. You know what I mean? And if you still hear it, like, if you hear Rogers, like, it's like, man, it's like watching the time clock. Like, oh, my God. Like, it's like, it's like, like having the best liquor you can have and you taste it and you be like, wow, yeah, that's that season. You know what I mean? And it's playing. Like when it's when it's jazz, it's that authentic. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, yeah. yeah. So I, I think like I think we we here be finding ourselves with different things like R and B and rap and you know what I'm saying? But I feel like the longest history might be uh R and B I mean uh jazz okay. or uh Rock and what roll, he said. Right? The rock thing, really, I, n I never thought about that. I might need to get a couple, couple we might have to do an episode with a rock cat or something. No, not might. Yeah, yeah we Definitely might have, have to, to yeah. you know. You know uh, okay. Right now, the common heart is killing. Okay. From who's Pittsburgh. that? I don't even know who right. they are. Common heart is yeah. Clink K. Yeah. It's, it's a rock group? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, yeah. Okay. Good morning, America. You know. Okay. Nice. Dwayne, I would shout out to uh, a group that's from Pittsburgh that was big in the 70s. It, it specifically rock uh, Granat, any of the Granati Grenad brothers, Dave Granati, Hermie Granati, Joey, Ricky. Look, I've been here all my life. I pride myself in knowing uh, at least mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. general. Yeah, they, I don't like, know folks, these they guys. know. They right. know, and, and that's one thing I really, I I really is respect about my brothers is that the history that yeah. they know of music and not just the knowledge, but the the backing that they bring with it when it comes to us performing our music. Now, I remember you, the, the question was, you know, do we have a sound? Like, does Pittsburgh have a sound? And in my opinion, you know, I, I'm, I'm a church boy, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I raise all church. So when I start playing in, in R and B and in the clubs and stuff, I didn't particularly hear a sound. Okay. But there was it's aggressive. Okay. And that's what I feel about Pittsburgh musicians. Uh especially the ones that are doing um doing things on our own, like the original material and, and performing live. We play aggressive. Uh, it's not a real. Sometimes we can be smooth, and sometimes we can we can you know lay it down. But I think we play aggressive enough to where we capture people, because like you say, there, there's a lot of different places that have their own sound, and I can't particularly say like my brothers might be able to say different, but uh, especially with the history that they know. But the feeling that I have is not it's not a sound; it's a feeling. When we play, and yet we're using this sound right metaphorically, metaphorically, because as it's, well, it's a feeling to me. Like when we play, like I can look at Flip sometime, and he'll be like, he'll be like, "What are you doing? Stop that!" <laughs> like, Just with a look, he's saying that with a look, right? Man, he'll okay, be on yeah. the other side. He'll okay. be like, he'll be like this. He'll be like, <laughs> okay. And I'll look at him, and he'll be like, he'll be like, he'll be like, I'll be like. That that means I need to play more aggressive because mm. that's we want people to hear us and not necessarily see us. When they see us, that's one thing. But if they hear us, that's good. That's a good analogy. You feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah. one thing. It's like when when I was taught, you know what I'm saying, and it wasn't even taught, but like 
I just, I just, it's just certain things that stand out to me. That's, um, for instance, when you walk, you don't tiptoe when you walk. You know what I'm saying? You take a step forward confidently. So play like that. You know what I mean? When you walk into a room, I know you had somebody in your life tell you to keep your hold your head up. And when you walk into the room, make a presence, make your presence known. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm here. So if you if you behind on your instrument, you know what I'm saying? Just play like that. You know what I mean? That's how I feel like because, you know, especially if somebody coming to see you. <laughs> right. right. I think you know specific can... specifically too to talking about us, everything that we've just listed in the past twenty five minutes when it comes to um, kicking it in the summer, hanging out, joking, just time invested plays into the music. And I'd like to think that that is one of the reasons why I think people enjoy coming to see us is because they know that that time has been invested. So it creates a consistency. Yeah. And off camera, before we started, you were asking about what, um, or, or maybe a key, you were asking about what, what makes a consistency. And, you know, we, it's us that play together. Yeah. So if we can't do it, if somebody can't make it, we, we just don't play the gig. So, so, wow. I, so, so, you, so I think, wow, that's, so, that's so I big. think maybe whereas a lot of musicians decide to do things differently and maybe, and take the gig and figure it out later, there's a chemistry that you lose with that. Is that a Pittsburgh thing and, or does that and, happen all over the country? I don't know. I think that's an hour thing. I mean, I mean, so, no, I mean, about I mean, the subbing. He's subbing. He's subbing. Oh, no, that's oh, all subbing everywhere. is everywhere. That's everywhere. Subbing is yeah. everywhere. So that's really that's germane to you guys. Su- subbing yeah. is everywhere the because. Subbing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should be able to play if you can't make a note. One month no. stop the show. When you got a brand and you got a chemistry, like you can't change the ingredients to a recipe. You can't put lemon powder in chili. You, know you what I'm sound saying? like your brother, bro, to these analogies, boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, he he kind of yeah. got them from me. You know. They got them from you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but Uncle Red will say way calmer. Yeah, he's okay. real calmer. Okay. You know. I mean, you know, <laughs> man. <laughs> you know? But well, here's what's interesting, and maybe this is a challenge for you, or maybe it's not. Um, because you, we, we get into, especially when you go hear a band, you know, people are more into the, the dependent individualities of the riffs, the runs, the licks, whatever. Uh, sure. Individual. Oh, for me, maybe I'm just my hearing and my production is a little different. I oh that was nice Hutch oh that was well at the end of the day what are you saying to me and in order to say to say something to me and pull me into the ride there has to be a chemistry that would demand outside of playing the camaraderie that you guys talked about beginning right. I don't and, tell you and what I don't know is, if a lot though. of musicians do that but it's more competing is. in Pittsburgh I'm gonna t- tell you what that is man. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what it is, real quick. I'm sorry. So, so what you're talking about is the listener. So, so again, when you when you when you got R and B, and you play R and B, it's not about licks. It's more about the feel, feel, right? So, when somebody comes and they're not understanding, them people is, is is getting made feel good. Like it's called feel good feel music, good right? Music. When when the jazz listener. Listen, it's like they have to speak to you with their instruments. You know what I'm saying? So the person that listens to jazz, ears different. You as a musician and as, you know what I'm saying, a, a director, you know these things. You got the best part. So you can you can listen to the music and you can deter where, okay, why would they go there and blend that part right there and not stay right there? You know what I mean? Because your ear right. is different. You know what I'm saying? But so, then it also brings about right, right. an identity. Absolutely. Of, sure. Absolutely. And, that, yeah. that, we and, can, yeah. that we can claim yeah. as yeah. a yeah. Pittsburgh sound. Absolutely. Right. Right. And keeping in mind that musical growth and entertainment aren't mutually exclusive. Wow. So one doesn't have to come without the other. You should always be trying to work on yourself musically and grow. It's not to, it's not to be a cop out and say like, well, because we have a brotherhood and because we're, we're tight and we, we can you know, play well with each other on a stage that we also shouldn't be still pushing ourselves. And the, in the reverse of that, you have some amazing, talented musicians that really just when they get to that element of performing, 
are sometimes lost. They, don't, they, don't, don't get me started with that. They, yeah. hey, so so it's it about NBA, pushing both. Take it to the NBA. Well, you ain't gonna stop. You ain't gonna stop training. I think, I think that's yeah. what it is. Yes, yeah. is we really have done, and and I think this is part of our sound. And I can't just label this on Pittsburgh, but I'm just talking about us. No, listen, I'm tell you your sound. I'm I'm labeling y'all. This is this is one of Pittsburgh sound Bill Henry band. Yes, sir. You no, know, thank you. I, I think what it is is that we all feed off of each other, and we all make each other better. There has not been one rehearsal, one gig, to where somebody has not stepped up for the next person. Right. It That's it. Every gig is to lift our is to lift our brother. Say that one more time for him. That's in our prayer before every gig. You know, if we make it a point to, no matter where you coming from, to get to the gig. All of us got jobs. You know, different lives, kids, grandkids. When you get to the gig and set up, you know, and, and just go on stage. You know, you don't know if you've been in a road rage incident. It's about taking a moment before we step on that stage. To hold hands and let everything in that circle leave it to go out and allow God's light to shine through us so we may touch someone and to not take for granted that people plan their whole week around coming to see the Bill Henry band. The ladies them got two, three outfits on the bed, trying Facts. to choose which one, got their hair did, their nails Facts. did. Then you pull up, ain't nothing more exciting than pulling up to a club and seeing the line around the corner for you. Yes, sir. It's a beautiful thing, you know. Uh, even yesterday, we played Hardwood Acres. It started raining. Certain people. Bill taking his shirt off now. Yeah, Bill taking his shirt off shirt now. Off. <laughs> he came to sex symbol. You know what I'm saying? He, he was, came to he was, he was watching that sex symbol. He was watching that tank video. He was watching that tank video. Ready? Yeah. You got it. So... Here, here's this is my my wish for you all, and not just because I want your your territory to be enlarged, but because I believe you all represent what Pittsburgh should be and could be, but presently is not. I think I said this Absolutely. to you at an episode uh, taping once before. Is when I I've experienced Pittsburgh ness, if you will, at its best is when I've been in another city with a group of Pittsburghers who for years and years didn't have a whole lot of aesthetically pleasing things to do in the city, you know, in terms of events and culture, et cetera. But when we go elsewhere, we make the event, yeah. right? It's like, no, we had to create our own fun. And so, yeah, y'all might have this wonderful vibe in this club, but we're going to bring us to the table. And, yeah. and, and what happens is when that's happening in its purest form is people gravitate towards it. Right. And then they're shocked. Y'all are from Pittsburgh. What the, and, and people have to have to be with us. We invite them in. It's like they from Pittsburgh, too. It's like we we're pretentious about it. No, come on in here. This is invite. And, and it's and it's relational. And that's what you all's power is. Right. Is that you all are so relational Absolutely. on what you all are doing. Right. It's they not about it. it's not just about Bill. Right. It's not just about. You wrote this song, right? It's not just about even just the band. You all are, are creating an experience, and Absolutely. you care about the audience's experience. Absolutely. Right? And which creates an identity, a sound, a, sound. a, feel, yeah. a feel, an yeah. aggression. Right? Yeah. Only is Jermaine, yeah. deals those words, yeah. buzzwords right. to you guys. Right. That, that, that's and, and everywhere well we've been outside of town, yeah. they treat us like rock stars, mm -hmm. you know? And it's a beautiful thing, you know. I mean, just, we was in Indiana one time playing, you know, and we was trying to get in the little club after club, strip club, you know, Larry wanted to go to strip club. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, hey. We got a couple hey, PKs yeah, in the building yeah, now. Yeah. You don't be hollering. PK. I know, that's what I, I, I said. No, I'm just, you know. <laughs> that's what I said. And I'm like, I thought. I thought you said you ain't do no stuff, bro. <laughs> you know, I was like it was the other time. Yeah, he was with the other time. No with the but but we couldn't get in his club because we had t-shirts on, you know. Okay. And it was fortunate we had played this this black tie affair. You know, we played the rooftop of the Coliseum, sold out joint. But we did a party the day before, and there was some people there who was in the club, some of the dancers. 
And they ran up there and told the managers, no, 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 that's the band. That's the band. That's on the roof. That's the band. Let them in. You know, so we got the VIP. Yeah, we got the VIP treatment. Got the we VIP. went to breakfast in the morning. The manager come over and say, your breakfast is comped from these people over there. That's all right. You know, that's so right. it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's what it is. You know, other cities I'll treat us. Uh, here, here, here's supposed to be with a couple of the, uh, the, the couple of the other episodes, and it's hard to kind of really get into it without – you know, dropping names and things of that nature. So wrapping this up, a big part of discussion, you know, again, we talked about at nauseum the how talented and gifted people are here. We got into this thing about the lack of professional. I told one of them artists that, I won't say their name, I trained and they were doing the gig and they were singing lyrics with their phone. I said, don't you ever... But, the, you know, because it's in the little 50 people, they loving her because she's killing. But you going, <laughs> you going to hold your phone. And, so, and you were, no, 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 yeah, no, your craft. Or, 50, or we got the gigs. We're talking to, we talked about the gigs. This happens. And we've talked about that. You'll see that on other episodes where we got this gig. And I got to practice. I ain't as good as some of these guys. No, just give me, just give me the keys. Da, 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 da. You get to the gig. They're so good. I know you don't know this song, so now I'm calling out for you know all three sets. The changes because they refuse to practice, mm-hmm. but yet uh, we're my check. So the whole lack of of, of practicing, and I, I I understand get that bag. I understand that, and, and you know, and sometimes it calls for, especially coming from a church, you're doing a gig, someone wants to sing, oh, what can you do that? I'm not talking about that. You're talking about doing three sets, you know. For me, anytime I step foot, my name is on the line. Right. I ain't mm-hmm. as good as y'all guys. So, like Larry Bird, I got to practice every mm-hmm. day, and I, well, I want to feel that 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 chemistry you guys talk about. Right. How often do you guys practice as a group? Oh, once a week. As a group? Mm-hmm. Once a week. Yeah, at least once a week. Nice. Once a week. But but if it was a concert, it was, if it's like, I was gonna yeah, say right. time yeah. like a big like As you all were building event, the chemistry. We, we we rehearse every day. It don't matter. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Until it get right. Depend on that show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But but we play four three, four times a week. I wait. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So and we talk about like trying to do three shows and two in ninety degree weather and then and then, and you know what I'm saying? You doing that, so of course you getting you getting reps. Reps. You know what I'm saying? So it, and it's other. I'm gonna piggyback off what you were saying because it's another thing too called the lazy planner. Because <laughs> ah. if you plan for somebody, right? Like say for it's not you, but say for it's somebody, man, dude, they had a show on Friday, and guess when you get your music Thursday? Like yeah, you know it's easy stuff. Ah. Uh, you Dude, know, like you ain't got yeah, a life, wow. like you ain't got nothing, you know what I'm saying? And then it's 37 o'clock, so you might not even got 24 hours, you know what I'm saying? Wow. They ain't giving you no charts, nothing. It's just like, yeah, man, you know, I'm just sitting these on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so, so, so you might come in and hear somebody that you know is killing, but he's not, he's like really can't be who he be. He's playing safe, he's getting through the job, and he's getting a call back, but it's like, you know, he's not at his best potential, but you don't know that. You looking like, what's wrong with this dude? And for me, you you you, you can't you can't thinking. develop but you can't develop a sound with that. No. And when you're when you're ultimate at the end of the day, the mission is to entertain. Yes. And the selfless part of it is it's not for you. It's for whoever you're performing to. So to tie in what you said about like reading the lyrics and maybe certain things, little cheat codes, uh-huh. you know, on stage, it's like you can't sell that because you. And it, I'm, I, I'm a big stickler on not if I if I don't know the words, and even if I forget yeah. words, you know I have brain farts from right. time to time and forget forget words. But if I but if I know if I know going in, even if we've done a, a, a rehearsal with this song, and I know I'm I don't have because there's two levels of it. There's one knowing it, but you but then there's actually putting feeling behind it, yeah. and you're selling it. You know, yeah. I can't like we do a medley with with a, a particular Jay Z song, it's an old school Jay Z song, and I know that that rap verbatim so that I can put passion into it. But if but 
there's no way I can convince somebody in the audience that I actually like like that song or took the time to even learn it, and it, it just it just looks lazy and they feel cheated. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes it makes perfect I think sense. One of the coolest things we did, we was playing a gig, and we was doing the boom boom boom. What was the name of that song? Oh, uh, um, boom, boom. mystical. And he got a complete brain fart on stage. We're like, boom, we're here. And he, and he, and he, yeah, and he was like, you know what I mean? He's like, he's trying to think of the song. Mm -hmm. And then I look at him and then I just break it down. And he said, it was the 3rd of September. Mm -hmm. And we yeah, turned right that, into ooh, it. Ooh, it, was, wow. it was one of the dopest moments ever. Whoa. For and if y'all didn't have that chemistry, that wouldn't have happened. Chemistry, it wouldn't that doesn't happen. Burn and crash. He'd have been like, crash stop the song, burn. start over. Let's go to another song. But he was he had the presence, and he's so musically, his repertoire listener is just crazy. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, My assumption is, as musicians, you can't get through the entirety of a show or a set without having to think. But if you can't have moments where you don't need to think, yeah. As you perform, yeah. you have not prepared well enough. That's what you're talking about. Is that Absolutely. like, oh, I just got this YouTube yeah. video yesterday. Yeah. I got to think about this the whole, whole time song. I'm up here. So I'm not free. So I'm not free. In my expression. Right. right. And you all have an opportunity. You give each other that freedom yeah. every yes. night, it sounds yes. like. And yeah. then honestly, too, you know, um, my church background taught me how to um, learn stuff on the fly. Yeah. Like the pedigree of, of musicians and the musicianship, it was just like churches, you know what I'm saying? You'd be like, yo, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And it's going to, it got to be like this. Keep up. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, either if you're a church musician, either you're going to uh, sink or swim. Listen. It's either going to sink or swim. Yeah, yeah. Listen, bro. <laughs> so, so, uh, so in those moments, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's just season. It's just like, yo, like he can go anywhere. And we don't know, like, we had know the rattle to have his back, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Whichever way he's leading, yeah, like yeah. up there, you know what I'm saying? Because it'd be, it'd be, it'd be dope, tail. like, that. yeah, yeah, because he had these, listen, man, this dude to have, man, we was in West Virginia on Saturday, and he had, I looked, he had these people jumping in the air in West Virginia, jump, don't these, <laughs> in West Virginia. Jump. I'm, I'm like, this. part of West Virginia was I all, could have, I got a base on me, though, but I want to jump so bad, right? yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, no, that's what's up. Hey man, this is this has been a riveting. My producers are saying wrap it up over there. So, oh, okay. man, 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 this can't we, be a two part. We, yeah, we might have to do a two part with yeah. these guys. Like, like, but you know, the sound of I'm I'm going to say it. The the sound of Bill Henry, and and that's when probably on the way home I'm a, I'm gonna play that CD and and begin to pull out. There might be some identifiers. Oh, that sounds like this that, but that sound that is identifiable to you. And and Pittsburgh, begin to understand that and claim that for one of our sounds. And hopefully these type of discussions, which you guys have laid out, especially the brotherhood, be, it's beyond the music. Absolutely. That, that that synergy could spill over into the broad, you know, uh, populace of Pittsburgh musicians and artists. So I applaud you guys for taking time out. You Thanks, know, I, I, appreciate I, you I, all being here. In the man. dark, but you guys are here, yeah, yo. Thank you. And, I want to say something too to you, Dwayne. You. Uh, yeah, you and I haven't known each other that, that long, but I listen to a lot of podcasts. Right, they're, they're yeah. super popular right now, and um, there are not a lot of podcasters in Pittsburgh. It, similar to a series of what you're trying to do, appreciate and just want to, you know from us give you your flowers while you're here and just applaud you for for trying to like pave appreciate a different it, pave a different lane appreciate it said your name i said damn i'm gonna have to put on a suit <laughs> <laughs> i told him i said i ain't riding my bike Stop. with no suit nah, nah. Nah. i'm gonna have to get this today <laughs> right. you, said, yeah. Yeah, you know what i said i said whatever your swag is yeah. i told hey, ben whatever your swag yeah. is man yeah, got, you know yeah but thank you Wayne, because in the in the process of making the album, you let me know that you had some tunes, uh -huh. and, and when I went to get him, his computer cracked. I had to get a new, a whole new computer. So he so could have been, like, been on the album. He could have been on the album. Guess he's gonna have to be on the next one. You know, guess he's gonna have to be on the next one. It was a Mac. It was a Mac. Stop using that Commodore sixty four with floppy disk. Right, right, right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> they clowning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
<laughs> Yo, Pittsburgh, what a great session. Again, this is Default, the maestro, with my man, the Kia Durham, the Bill Henry Band. We out here. Big shout-outs to Blend with David Off Cigars. Did I say that right? <laughs> I said a key. Don't say that, dog. The smooth one. <laughs> say say uh, your greetings or your farewells to the people too, my brother. So listen, I pre- I just appreciate being a part of this process, and and just like you all, when when Dave, I mean when Delane, I messed up his name, <laughs> but when when he asked me to to be a part of this, it was because it was him. I didn't need to hear anything else. He was asking me, I was in. Um, and so I'm appreciative of this, and I'm appreciative of you all's energy because this this is affirming everything I felt because of the quality of the folks that have been sitting in rooms with us, man. And you all, I'm going to be real with you. We've had quality, but you all are raising the bar. Yes. And yes tonight, I appreciate that, man. So shout out to you all. Shout out to Pittsburgh. If you don't understand, BHB. become understanding of uh, BHB. Thanks. Mm-hmm. If you ain't got that Bill Henry ride 2019, go get it. Download it. Shout out to again, Blend and the, and the manager, Rocky Creole. Thanks for letting us use the room, Rocky. Redwood Media, our producers. Crew Productions, our producers. Shout out, big ups. We out, y'all. One love. We got the sound.